Hey guys, welcome to this week's podcast episode. I've got a fantastic guest for you today. His name is Jamie Lima, and he is the founder and president of Woodson Wealth Management. He's also the founder of Allegiant Divorce Solutions. So I have this is the first time I've had a guest come on to the podcast, talk about the implications of divorce. We're going to talk about the ins and outs, navigating through divorce, protecting yourself from a financial standpoint. And I'm really happy to have Jamie on the show. So Jamie, welcome. Thanks for having me. I'm happy to be here. Yeah. So I know we had, uh, we connected and we were talking backstage and kind of talk about, cause you know, divorce is a taboo subject and, um, you know, you know, these things like prenups are taboo. So kind of talk about your early journey and how you leverage that experience to helping others. Great, great question. Yeah. I mean, I think my, for my personal journey, um, there's a professional journey and there's a personal journey where, where I'll start with the personal side, just because that's really what prompts me to get into this, this line of work to begin with. But um, I, I grew up in a divorced family. You know, my parents were divorced there when I was roughly seven or eight years old. Um, I, I recognized early on that they were, you know, struggling to make ends meet. And it was very, very challenging for them, both uh, from a financial perspective and, and probably from a, from an emotional perspective as well. Uh, you know, my dad was working, you know, multiple jobs to try to, you know, put a, keep a roof over two, two homes, um, and, and care for my, you know, my daughter, my, my sister and, 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 uh, his daughter and, uh, my mother worked multiple jobs and just you know a lot of side jobs just trying to keep us keep us afloat and and there was a moment in time when I was very young uh, probably around the same age you know, again seven or eight years old and one of my best friends growing up he and his mother I, I still remember to this day they they brought us over a, a box of groceries in order for us to to put food in our pantry and I I learned in that moment even though I was still very young that you know things were tough. It was it was very impactful to me even at that young age, and I remember telling myself that if, if I ever had kids one day, I never wanted them to have the same experience and the same stress in their life that I did at that at that stage. And you know, it, then you know, fast forward a few years, and now I'm here. I am. You know, I'm, I got myself into the financial services world mainly because of that experience because I feel like. Growing up, like if, if or you know, even in, in even in our adult lives, if, if there's something that we don't have a lot of, I mean, sometimes we tend to gravitate towards it. In my life, it was in my life, it was money, and and um, so I learned early on about you know the financial services world and, and and investing and business and things of that nature, and that's what prompted me to get into you know the world of finance, where I've 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 been a financial planner for almost 20 years now, mainly stemming from those early experiences. And, you know, in 2017, I went through a pretty challenging and financially and also emotionally challenging divorce myself. And I started learning more about the divorce financial planning aspect of things. And, and, I'm, and now I've become a certified divorce financial analyst and launched my own financial planning company relative to divorce and just trying to help people navigate some of the decisions that they have to make and prepare for and navigate, you know, divorce financially. Um, so, but it's it's really really stemming from those early, you know something that happened to me at seven or eight years old really propelled me into this line of work you know forty years later. Your personal experiences growing up you know kind of influence your choices, and I know that's kind of a generalized statement you know, but it's like for example you know uh, millennials and uh, we grew up you know right during the great financial crisis, and we learned to never trust you know governments and you know never trust corporations. Uh, you know, Nixon, you know, when he was impeached, people learned not to trust the government. So it's kind of very interesting in how you've turned that, how you focus on, you know, that aspect, you know, finances, because, you know, that that that's kind of like the currency that allows us to do things in, in today's world. Because if you don't have that, you, you know, your SOL. So, so one thing I ask is, uh, I've seen the younger generation having less kids, not getting married, uh, you know, starting their own businesses, kind of uh, not really relying on, they know that social security is not going to be there, or the government's not going to be there, you know, jobs aren't going to be there. So this idea of getting married, and I've always been curious, because why do people get married? Uh, because, you know, you mentioned the divorce rate is 50%, you know, nine out of 10 of my colleagues have been in divorced. And, um, and it's just, uh, you know, it's devastating, you know, over half, everything they work for, half of it goes to you know, all of this. And it's, um, you know, it's kind of like why your 90% chance of, of failure, you lose half your assets. 
And it's kind of like we're sold this storybook, you know, you got to pay for this million dollar wedding, you know, beautiful. So mm -hmm. kind of talk about, you know, the implications of divorce, like these changing trends. Yeah, I think you're you're absolutely right. I mean, there's 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 a lot to unpack there. We could probably do a whole podcast on you know the experiences that millennials have had with investing and and who to trust and who not to trust. I mean, we could we could certainly do a, a second podcast just on that. But it, you're, you're absolutely right. I mean, you know, growing up, you, the the very first experience a lot of millennials had with investing it was. You know, they put money into a uh, into a brokerage account. They buy some investments, and then two thousand eight, two thousand nine happens, and it wipes them out. And they're like, "Forget this! this is, you know, I'm going to go off and do something else because this is this is a a fool's game." And and that's the challenge that we as as, as financial advisors have always had is we, we, there's kind of a negative connotation if you go to a party. You want to talk to the doctor, the attorney, the the business owner, and so on. As soon as somebody comes up and says, "Hey, I'm a financial advisor," everybody's like, everybody scatters, right? Nobody wants to talk to the financial advisor because they think we're all a bunch of scumbags, and that's not necessarily how it is, right? I mean, there, a lot of us have been doing this a long time and try to do what's right by our clients and, and approach work the are the work that we do the, the right way. So I want to make sure I throw that out there. But I've, I've definitely been seeing the trend that you're talking about over over the last few years of. Uh, a lot of single income families, a lot of dual income households, no kids, um, because, you know, God forbid something does happen in a relationship, they want to be able to, to part ways and separate assets and keep things clean and not have to worry about the emotional toll that divorce is going to take on children. And I get it. I think, I think one of the biggest things, and I've, I've been trying to do a better job of this in in educating people and in po other podcasts that I'm doing, and even in our, even in the marketing and that we do, because we try to be educators about all this stuff. I think one of the things that we really need to stop doing is is creating a stigma around a prenuptial agreement. And there's such a negative connotation to it. But if you think about it, a marriage is a business transaction. You go down to the county courthouse, your spouse gives them their their information, you give the them your information, they approve you to get you get a marriage license, a, a legal document that says you are eligible to get married. You go through this million dollar event like you're talking about, which I think is crazy. Lo and behold, you're married and it's it's a formalized legal agreement, right? It's effectively a business transaction. You know, the the CEO of the Lou household was now going to be the CEO, you know, join forces with the CEO of another household and they're going to become one, right? Right. Layering in a prenuptial agreement there seems a little bit icky and it gets kind of weird and yeah, and, and people are like, oh, there's like, do we really want to go into this thinking that we're going to break up and everything? It's like, what? like you have to have an out clause. Every business transaction in the world has termination agreements with, embedded in it, right? Why would why would a, a marriage be any different? So I think we need to remove the stigma, and I think it would be super helpful if more people considered it. Because in these situations, I'll I'll give an example, right? I grew up in New England, even though I live in California now, I grew up in New England. And I sorry for to say this to a lot of your listeners, but I am a huge Tom Brady fan. I've been a New England Patriots fan since I was a, since I was four or five years old. So as far as I'm concerned, I'm concerned, Tom Brady walks on water. You, if anybody paid attention to the divorce of between him and Giselle, it was the fastest, the cleanest, probably the least expensive celebrity divorce that is that has been known to man because they went through the prenup exercise. They knew when the, if this wasn't going to go south, she was going to get this and he was going to get that. And this is what the parenting plan was going to look like. And these are the assets they were going to keep and so on and so forth. And it was super clean. Probably, you know, involved, you know, many, many attorneys, which a lot of us don't have to worry about as, as laymen and as normal people. But I, I think a lot more people going into a, a marriage with that document in hand, really thinking it through, could save themselves a ton of headaches. Yeah, I love that. And, uh, you know, same thing with uh, Jerry, you know, he wanted to give Mackenzie, you know, he didn't want to screw her over. It looks like uh, Bill Gates as well. You'd, it sparked so many interesting questions because, uh, like I said, um, there's this uh, whole, like you talked about prenups. Um, so, and then I've also seen, like, for example, a lot of a-list celebrities and um, you know musicians they don't get married because it's just, I don't I don't want to say guaranteed but it's almost like they're gonna part ways so which kind of brings me to my uh, next next question is uh, with divorce divorce solutions you know kind of talk about this uh, 
you know, is it better to so this prenup agreement you know it's got you've got an insurance but um with your extensive background in managing assets for families and businesses at morgan stanley and fidelity what are um some key strategies you help employ people to preserve their wealth in the case of you know divorce i've also recently there's this idea of like a conscious divorce like just basically this amicable splitting is just like very intentional kind of just you know it's almost like having a will or just and um that way it's just very formalized it's not this emotional bitter battle so talk about that yeah and I'll, we, we can start there the the perfect <laughs> example i have there is my my I, I am i am remarried after my divorce in 2017 i did find an amazing woman and and we we've since been remarried um, their situation was exactly that. It was very, it was more of a decoupling. Like, this isn't working for you. This isn't working for me. You know, we want to, how do we make sure we do this in a most, the most amicable way? How do we make sure the kids are taken care of? And, and it was, you know, a thousand dollar divorce because that's the cost that they, they sat, they literally sat together in down. I'm in San Diego. I'm just outside of San Diego. So we went, I went with them to, to, help them file the documents. I was a witness to the documents and it, and it made things so much easier. You know, the kids are amazing. We have a great relationship. All of us get along. It just, it's just one of those things where it's, you know, it's, it's not always that way. Right. But it can happen. And a lot of that is based on communication and really just trying to make sure that you're, you're fair. It's all fair, right? Like, you know, who wants to keep what and like, well, let's talk it through and, this is what I want, and this is what you want. So, how do we make it work for everybody? And it's and that's that's how it, it can be. Unfortunately, we know that that's like ten percent or maybe twenty percent of divorces that are out there. Um, a good majority of them involve attorneys and duking out in courts and involving professionals to help separate assets, which can be a little bit of a challenge. But um, I would encourage anybody that's out there if they can figure out a way to make it amicable. Um, certainly, it will help keep more money in your pocket versus the attorneys. Um, and even folks like me, you know, I tell people all the time, like, I'm not here to take anybody's money. I'm here to just help you through this process, you know, and get fairly compensated for it. But if you can do it on your own, you know, more power to you. I, I'm now forgetting the first part of the question. Uh, the, I started with I started with the end. Yeah, I mean, you mentioned pre, uh, prenup and then um, so it sounds like just having open conversations with your spouse or partner you know, in the event that things go south, we have a plan, you know, we have a plan, like a plan of action. Um, so in this case, you know, with, with a legion divorce solutions, how do you assist individuals in navigating the complexity of divorce, both uh, pre and post? And my other question is like clients, are you seeing more clients like af as they get divorced or more? Is it just kind of divorce planning kind of like you know, we want to talk to you just in case we get divorced, like they're still married, but they just want to seek additional advice. I, I now remember the question. I'm, I'm getting old, man. So like I, <laughs> I, uh, I got to make sure I repeat these questions back. But um, the first part of the question was the, you know, asset. I think it comes down to asset division and being really fair and pragmatic about it. The question was around preserving wealth, right? So as far as preserving wealth goes, I think one of the main things the main trends that I'm seeing right now is people don't really understand the impact that taxes will have on some of the decisions that they have to make, right? So we could talk all day about different asset division strategies and, and how we work with clients in that respect and so on. But I think this is one that your listeners would really want to hone in on if they are considering getting a divorce. And why I say that is because Let's say, for example, we have a husband and wife that have, or a spouse and spouse, and we do deal with a lot of same-sex marriages as well. You have a spouse and spouse that has $500,000 in equity in their home, and one of them has $500,000 in a 401k. That's just, just for easy math, right? In the amicable situation, a lot of people would look at that and go, okay, well, you know what? You, know what? you keep the house and you keep the kids, and I'm going to keep the 401k and move on with my life. And then in maybe even some of the not so amicable situations, people look at that and go, well, it's, it's an equal split. Let's just move on. And a lot of attorneys miss this too. They don't recognize the impact that taxes have. Well, because if that person that owns the home decides to sell it sometime in the future, they're going to get some favorable tax treatment on that. Whereas the person that has the 401k, even though the numbers on the, on the, on the spreadsheet that they create might look equal, you have to factor taxes into the 401k because when you take money out of that 401k, you pay taxes with every distribution. So $500,000 in a 401k might really only be worth 
three fifty, whereas the house is definitely worth five hundred, and it's and it's probably going to appreciate and continue to grow over time. So we have to. The one thing people miss all the time is the tax component of it. So we have to walk people through that, and that's part of the asset division that we do. Is we 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 specialize in, in focusing on the after tax values of, of different types of investments and different types of assets, because if you want to get a fair and equitable split. You have to know the impact the taxes have, and I think that that goes a long way. in, you know, circling back to your question, how do people how do people maximize and manage their wealth through this process? It's by focusing on those little nuances like that that are going to impact them over a five, ten, twenty year time frame. Right? It's not just the decision that they're making today and how that impacts them in this moment. It's how does it impact them for the future as well? Um, is that is that helpful? Yeah, it really, um, you know, because you have to look at it from all different angles. You have to look at it from, especially taxes. You know, that's going to be your big, uh, you know, the government wants its its chunk of change, um, and then you also, if you have to liquidate those assets, that's going to have tax implications. The other question I have is, uh, so you know, kind of ending, and I really enjoyed this conversation because it's very enlightening. Um, it just kind of sheds light on something that people are so afraid to talk about. And um, mm -hmm. do you work with? Uh, uh, just uh, opposite couples or just same sex or how can people um, because you know it's different from each state and you know you're based in California but if clients are interested in talking to you how, what's the best way to get advice or find more information I would say send them you know we can everybody can visit the website the the website's easy to find it's allegiant divorce solutions or allegiant ds.com and I'm sure the links will be all put up by by Christopher when he posts this show so you can access them there but the one thing I want to make sure we drive home in this conversation is relative to what you just mentioned is we can work with people in all 50 states. You mm -hmm. know, we have clients in New York, New Jersey, Virginia, Florida, Texas, a couple in South Dakota. Um, we're, we're all over the map at this stage of the game because we do work in a virtual environment. And a lot of people are like, well, you know, you don't understand the laws of my state. <laughs> as far as I know, two plus two is still equals four in Florida, Connecticut, Massachusetts, Virginia, right? And we, because we handle the financial aspect of things. And as long as we get an understanding, as long as we understand the rules relative to asset division, community property versus quasi community property versus separate property rules that are out there, we can work with anybody. It's your attorney and you who need to understand the legal aspects of things and legal process and so on. And the, and the beauty of the work that we do and the technology that we use is that, that the, all the reports and all of the analysis that we run for all of our clients is admissible in courts in all 50 states based, because the software is smart enough to know which state you're in and what reports and, and the format that those reports need to be in to present to the, to the courts. So I don't need to be an expert in New Mexico law to be able to help somebody in New Mexico, if that makes any sense. Yeah. And um, so how can people find out more about you, you know, check out the work that you do, reach out to you um, if you have any um, and just people can get more information? Yeah, I, I would, again, send them to the website, right? AllegiantDS.com. There's a lot of information on the website. There's actually a free resources page. So if, any, if there's anybody out there that's considering going through a divorce or trying to navigate it on their own, they can go to the free free, free resources page of the website we don't take an email address. There's no phone, you know, first name, last name, email, phone number. We're not going to pepper you with a bunch of spam. It is literally free information. So you can go there and download all the documents you need. Um, there's there's 10 to 12 different worksheets on there that I think are super helpful as, as people are going through this exercise. We did also create uh, in, the, in the last couple of months, we've created what's called a, a, a Facebook group for uh, it's called Preparing Financially for Divorce. So if, you, if you're on Facebook, you know, I know it's. I know some of the younger crowd out there is like Facebook. Forget it. But uh, there's a there's a great uh, opportunity to join us in that group. There, it's all confidential. It's it's a private group, so so your spouse is never going to see that you're in this group. Um, it's a great place to ask questions and get the help you need. It's all free. We don't take any information there. Um, and I'm trying to do my best to you know three or four times a day try to share some you know tips and tricks along the way uh, that I think might be helpful. And again, it's all all a free resource. So. Um, it's a great place for us to to all get together and support one another. So again, that's called preparing financially for divorce uh, on Facebook. So people can find us there as well. And and again, the website has all my contact info. So if people want to schedule a time to talk, or email me or have questions, 
they, my cell phone number is on the website, so they can call me or text me. Um, I'm not that, um, you know, we don't do 800 numbers here. They can, yeah. anybody that needs help, we certainly want to make sure we get them the right place. And for all the audience out there, let's thank Jamie for coming on. And again, it's a, it's like, it's something that we're afraid to talk about, but we have to talk about. It's like death, taxes, divorce, kind of those three topics. And uh, the better you plan, you know, the, you know, the better off you be, the more smoother, more money you save, more hassle. Um, and with that, thanks so much for coming on to the podcast. Thanks for having me.